doing a sit-down video today. I don't even know where this is going. I just kind of felt something on my heart. And I was like, okay, let's just sit down. Let's do this. Let's take the camera out. Let's put it on the tripod. Let's sit down and let's just start talking. So I'm just going to speak what's on my heart and what's on my mind today. And it's been a while since we've done one of these. And I think it's important to have a little bit of balance on my channel. You know, I do want to produce high quality content. I do want to produce entertaining content, but at the same time, I want to keep it real because this is who I am. I'm a real person, I'm totally honest. There's nothing that's off limits. And so I thought today, this would be a really good topic to talk about. I don't know where this is going. I have no notes. Sometimes I have to outline what I'm going to say because I just talk so much. <laughs> and I will be like, oh, okay, 40 minutes of footage. Let's try to edit through that. So let me kind of give you guys a backstory a little bit. I started YouTube when I was pregnant with Eden. If you've watched from the beginning, definitely let me know. I love it when my OG viewers tell me they've been watching since I was pregnant. You guys are amazing. <laughs> my channel has been through a lot of different changes and shifts since then, and so thanks for still watching my videos. But I started as a pregnant mother YouTuber. And then obviously once I had her, I was a mommy YouTuber. I fell into the mommy YouTuber niche, if you will. Um, all my friends were mommy YouTubers. Pretty much every single friend that I made on YouTube personally was a mom. Um, and it was great because we had our own little community and our own little tribe. And honestly, that's the reason I kept creating content because the community was so strong, not only from you guys, but just from all my fellow friends that I made along the way. Um, I made this series called Body I'm Ejector Baby and I started inviting all of these friends of mine onto my channel to kind of share their experiences with their body image. And at that time it was interesting because, you know, I wasn't body positive really. I wasn't gung-ho about my body. I just thought this might be a cool series that I think might help a lot of women out there. And so I did this series with all these friends of mine for months and months and months. There were a few mom friends here on YouTube that I would consider myself really close with. But honestly, I have to say, I never really felt like I fit in with the mommy niche. You know, that's kind of funny to say because I've been here for six years. I'm friends with a lot of the people that started out at the same time that I did. Um, you know, when I think of the time that I started, I think of Brittany and baby, um, Aaron and baby, which Aaron is gone now, sad day. Laura and Leighton, she's gone as well. My friend Jess with the Mommy Archives, she's changed her channel name now. There are literally so many of us, like I could sit here and name channels all day long. A lot of them don't even exist anymore. A lot of them don't make videos anymore. But there was this like really close tribe of Mommy YouTubers. We would all collaborate with each other. We were all supportive of each other and it was wonderful. Um, but then when I realized I could start making money off of this platform and I could start growing my channel that way, it was kind of hard to find other friends. All that I had was like my close tribe of people, which was awesome. It was great, but we had all collaborated with each other so much that it was like, okay, we need to like find some newer people. So I started going to video conferences. I remember going to my very first ever Playlist Live. And this was back in 2014, I believe. I think. 14, 15, 14, I don't know. Eden was really little, so maybe 15, 2015. She was young, um, and I made the mistake of taking her with me. Don't ever do that. If you ever go to a video conference, or any conference at all, don't take your little kids. <laughs> Just don't. <laughs> It's not gonna be an enjoyable experience. But I didn't know any better, and this was my first video conference, and so I took her with me. And I had kind of made some connections with some other creators online, just from us watching each other's videos, or maybe like I tweeted them and they responded. And so I'm just like this small channel and this huge sea of large, large channels. And I mean, at the time, I would probably say that everyone's channel was probably around like, 150,000, 200,000 or so. My channel might have been in like the 15,000 kind of range. Um, so it was definitely a much smaller channel at the time and I didn't have any confidence in myself as a creator. I went to this conference just hoping that I'd be able to make friends and make connections and hopefully build my channel or at least get some knowledge on how to build it. And I just remember how sad that video conference was. When I think back to my first time at Playlist Live, 
it was really a sad experience because there were so many people that I met and I immediately felt like this could be a really good connection, you know, a good friendship and maybe we can like help each other grow or whatever. And then you just find out that like they have no interest whatsoever in you because of your channel size. Now, I do want to say something in this part of the video because I can understand where large creators come from when it comes to who they are going to collaborate with or who they want to spend time, you know, with shouting out or having on their channel. Like you're not just going to choose any person, especially not just a stranger you met for the first time, right? So I just want to say I didn't expect anybody to like give me shout outs or to do any of that stuff, but I had so many creators putting the camera on me, asking me what my channel name was. I would say my channel name and they would say, awesome. And then I thought I'd be in the vlog the next day. I would check, I know, I was not in the vlog the next day. And this even happened with channels that were like friends of mine that were just larger channels. I realized very early on that it was kind of one of those situations where if I didn't have anything to give them um, a value, also known as subscribers and views, then I probably wasn't a good candidate for a collaboration. It honestly was very discouraging. And like I said before, I didn't really expect it of them, but the fact that they took the camera out and they took the time to vlog me and ask me my channel name, I thought for sure at least I'd be in the vlog for like a five second clip. And let's be honest, probably like five people would have subscribed because nobody's gonna subscribe to somebody that they're just seeing in a five second clip. But in my little, you know, Shaylee creator head, I don't know, I was just like, oh, I was so heartbroken because I was like, I'm not good enough. I'll never be good enough. My channel's too small. I'm unimportant. Nobody cares. And seriously, it was like a big pity party. So I'm very involved with the YouTube mom community because I had been a creator in that niche for so long. I truly have a bunch of people I would consider good friends that I've met along the way. But something just never clicked for me. I almost just felt like I was never gonna measure up to the type of creator that they were. And maybe you guys are watching this right now, maybe one of my original friends that I've had since the beginning, maybe you're watching this video and you thought the same thing. Maybe it's normal to feel that way, that you don't fit in somewhere. But I, yeah, I just always felt like I stood out and I just never fit in. Even though I had these friends, I just felt like there was no connection. Does that make any sense at all? I don't even know if I'm making sense right now. But I wanted to just explain this so you guys can get a bigger picture because often what you see on our videos or what you see on our Instagrams or whatever is kind of a different perspective than this one. I struggle with making friends just as much as I did before I started making videos. I struggle connecting with other YouTubers. I feel like that comparison game is so strong. It's so hard to meet a creator and not compare yourself to them. I think I've gotten better through the years of just trying to stay in my own lane, focus on what I'm supposed to be doing and not worry about everybody else around me. But in the beginning when I was insecure and my channel was smaller and I didn't really know who I was or where I fit in, it was hard making friends on YouTube because I just felt like I was never good enough. Fast forward a few years later, I got invited back to Playlist to speak on a panel. This was a really big deal because it was my first ever panel. I just remember how excited I was. And the panel that they put me on was a body positivity panel. And I was like, that's kind of weird because I don't make body positive videos. At that time, I had never, ever, ever made a body positive video. It was really random and I was very confused, but I just figured it's probably from that body image after baby series that I did with all my mommy YouTuber friends. And we all talked about our bodies. So that's what I figured it was, but I just went with it because I was like, it's my first ever panel. Like, I'm just gonna go, <laughs> you know? I can pull something out of my butt. I can lie about something if I have to. Not like I want to do that, but I won't go up there looking like an idiot. I'll try to you know, have something to say in the conversation. And I went and I spoke on that panel and I remember all these other creators that created body positive content, like these people were actually doing it. 
I was not doing it. I just remember being in their presence and I was like, this is what I'm supposed to do with my life. Like I 100% knew without a shadow of a doubt, this was where I was supposed to be. And I had already had my YouTube channel for about four to five years at this point when I found this out. It honestly felt like such a God thing to me. I don't know if I would have ever figured out my niche now and figured out my audience now if I hadn't gone through all of that, never feeling like I fit in and then the whole panel thing. I don't know if I would be here today making this kind of content, but I came back from that trip and I remember making a video on my channel and I just talked about how incredibly inspired I was. It was really the first time that I allowed myself to be proud of my body and what it had gone through and to speak openly on it. And I just remember being so afraid. It was the scariest thing in the entire world because it's not something that I'd ever done before. It felt awkward. It was like, who are you trying to, you know, give these people advice when you're not qualified? You've never made a body positive video. Like, what are you doing? Um, but I just knew like that passion was so deep inside of me. I was like, I have to do this. Like, I just have to try. I feel like God works in really mysterious ways, but sometimes he also works in very obvious ways. And this situation in my life was a very obvious God encounter for me. Like I can't explain what it felt like to have finally found people that I connected with instantly. And since then, this whole body positive community, I have met friends and I have had these like really deep connections with these people and I just feel like I fit in. And it's such an amazing feeling to feel like you fit in someplace. I think the number one human need out there and the human desire is to have a community and to fit in. I think those two things are probably more important to most of us than anything. Even if you haven't really thought about it and you don't think it means a lot to you, I mean, without people in your life and without fitting in somewhere, life would be pretty isolating. So I wanted to film this video today. I just feel like I needed to. I don't know if this is speaking to any of you guys right now, but I wanted to encourage you with this. I wanted to encourage you and just say, if you haven't found that community of people yet that you feel like you fit in with, I just want to encourage you just to keep searching, keep looking for them. And I think they might find you when you're least expecting it, but I think we still have to be proactive about finding friends as well. And I am probably the biggest hermit in the world. I could literally sit in my bedroom for three weeks straight and not talk to a soul and I'd be totally fine. <laughs> like I'm just not an outgoing extroverted person. And God knew that and he was like, okay, well I'm going to give you something, a really cool opportunity of speaking on a panel, but you're gonna have to go speak about a subject you don't even know about and meet people you have no idea who they are. Like I had to research everybody. Um, and that's when I found some of my favorite channels today. Yeah, he just laid it out right then and there. Oh, and then he did something even more incredible and amazing. A year after that, I got another email from Playlist Live saying that I was invited back to speak on another body positive panel. And at that point I had been making some of this content and kind of digging in deeper. So I was like, this is really exciting because now I feel like I actually have something of value and something to say. Then the program director of Playlist Live sends me like this itinerary that gives me the list of names of other people on the panel. And the first name on that piece of paper is somebody who played such a crucial part in me changing my life and loving my body and accepting myself. And that was Loie Lane. And she was on the panel with me. I straight up fangirled. I was in a Mexican restaurant with my kids. We were eating lunch. I remember this so vividly. We were eating lunch at a Mexican restaurant. It was delicious. Okay, just wanted to throw that out there. And I read her name and I was like, what? 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 And Eden's like, what's wrong, mommy? What's going on? <laughs> she was all concerned about me because I'm like freaking out on the verge of tears. Like, this is insane. And uh, yeah. We ended up being able to be on a panel together. I got to meet her. I got to tell her how much she's impacted my life. That was just such a surreal moment though of everything kind of coming back full circle for me. Um, that was all within the span of a year. One year before I had watched one of Loie's videos, it deeply, deeply impacted me It inspired me and it made me just change my way of thinking. And then a year later, 
and put on a panel with her. And we're speaking together with a few other awesome, amazing people in a room full of like teenagers. It was just Amazing. It was seriously one of the most amazing experiences of my life. Like to this day, I still get chills thinking about it because it's only a God thing. God takes care of his kids, you guys. God loves us and he wants us to succeed. He wants us to find that community. He wants us to live in community. That's really what the church is supposed to do. And this is a really unpopular opinion, but I just, I've never felt like you have to go to church to have community with others. If you're hanging out with people, and you guys are encouraging each other and you're praying for each other or whatever and you're just like at your house drinking coffee to me that's the exact same thing as church you don't have to be in a corporate worship setting in a building with other believers to have community and to experience what that feels like you know my situation is very unique because i am an influencer so a lot of my friends are online friends that i don't get to actually meet or see i do have to say that through my vulnerability and my honesty in my videos, it's caused my friends that I know in real life to reach out to me and say, wow, I thought I was the only one struggling with this. I thought I was the only one going through this. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for being open. Thank you for being honest. And then it leads to like going to coffee together and hanging out at each other's houses and then having play dates. And it's just like this whole community that's been formed just because I chose to be vulnerable. Like I said in the beginning, it made me physically ill to think about talking about my body in the very beginning. I was sick thinking about it because it had been this thing of shame and this thing that I hated for years and years and years and years. And I didn't want people to know I was insecure. I didn't want people to know that I was going through something so hard, but people knew. and. The haters that would watch my videos would take it and run with it. They would gossip about my weight, they'd make fun of my weight, they'd make fun of the way I looked. And at that time, oh my gosh, I almost gave up on YouTube because I just couldn't handle it. But then I realized that what the haters were saying about me, I could actually turn around and use to my benefit and use to my good. I could claim that, yeah, you know what, I am overweight. <laughs> And I may not be the prettiest girl in the entire world. And that's okay, because I am made to look like me, and I'm not made to be somebody else. Um, this video is all over the place. Oh my goodness. But hopefully someone, one of you ladies or gents out there watching this video, maybe one of you guys took something away from this. And that's really my hope with my channel. I want you guys to fall in love with who you are. I want you to fall in love with the person God created you to be. I want you to know that you're amazing and that you deserve community, that you deserve friendships. Don't think for a second that you're not gonna fit in anywhere in life. Don't think for a second that you're the only one out there that is alone. Um, there's so many people out there that need friends and they need that community. So my little takeaway from this is find what sets your soul on fire. Find that thing that you're passionate about. Find that thing that you love. And for some of you that might be buried way down deep because you're a mom now and you've put yourself on the back burner. But now it's time to take yourself off the back burner. Put yourself on that front burner. We all know we like the front part of the stove better because it's more easy to reach when you're cooking food. Okay, just... <laughs> Cut. All right, put yourself first. Just put yourself first right now in this season of your life. Find that thing that you just love, you can't live without, and do it. Just do it. And I think it's there in those moments where you're going to find true community. And it just kind of all comes full circle. It did for me, and I have no doubt that it will for you as well, because God really does want the best for us. Um, so anyways, I will stop the video here because I've been rambling all day long, but leave me a comment down below um, what you thought about this video. I'll be trying my best to answer all the comments down below. If you guys ever want to get a hold of me really quickly, find me on Instagram and DM me over there. I'm highly, highly involved on Instagram. Hope you guys have an amazing day and I love you and we'll see you in our next video. I'm a